Hello! I'm Elaine, and I'm a tour guide in the French Quarter. I do ghost tours. And I am not going to tell you the stories that I tell on my tour, because you gotta pay for those. But if you want to hear some interesting things that have happened to me while I'm leading random drunk people around the French Quarter, I got you. One of the things that I absolutely hate on tours is when people are being just mildly inappropriate. Like, not bad enough that I can kick them off or ask them to stop, but just bad enough that it's making everyone uncomfortable. And most common is mildly inappropriate jokes. And they're the worst because, like, if I dare call them on it, they're just gonna be like, oh, it's just a joke, man. Like, can't you take a joke? Uh, most commonly, this pops up in the LP here joke. Uh, which is like, at the beginning of the tour, we tell people there are no bathroom breaks, so go now. And so many guys, at least like two to three times a week, you'll have somebody, and yes, it is usually a male, say, I guess I'll just whip it out and pee here then. And I know they mean it as a joke, but the problem is, I have no idea how to respond to that. Like, if it is a joke, it's not funny. So I can't force a laugh and be like, oh, ho, ho, how funny. And like, what am I supposed to say? Like, sure, go ahead. Like, what if you're serious? You might be, because people do do that. So what I usually do is I treat them as if they're serious, but with a smile. So I'll be like, oh, well, you probably shouldn't do that. You could get arrested for it. Or no, please go to the bathroom for that or whatever. And half the time people still get offended that I dared not respond the way they wanted to to that joke. And for the life of me, I do not know how they want me to respond. Uh, but there are other moments that are mildly inappropriate jokes. Uh, there was one weekend that I had two separate young women come on two tours right in a row that were making mildly inappropriate jokes. And that's really unusual because I will be honest, it tends to be a guy thing. Uh, but these women, <laughs> both of them were Tulane students, and uh, one of them, it mostly went down at the Lollary Mansion. So, like, I'm sitting there telling this story about the horrors of enslavement. And at that point, I was literally just talking about, like, the history of enslavement. And she's interrupting me to make jokes? Like, there was one point that I was talking about some of the gruesome practices that were common here, and she was being like, cool. And I'm like, <laughs> not cool. At another point, I was talking about some of the things that are probably exaggerated there, some of the stories that have gotten, uh, you know, built on over the years, to put it mildly. And she was like, aw, that's sad. I want to hear more gruesome stuff. Can't they be true? And I'm like, what is wrong with you? I'm talking about real human beings being tortured to death. And then at the end of that story, I have to talk about the fact that Delphine Lollary got away with it. Like, she was never punished. And this woman looks me dead in the eye and says, deuces. And I'm like, no, not deuces. What the fuck is wrong with you? Uh, the other girl that was mildly inappropriate that weekend, uh, it fell down at the convent. I was talking about stories of dead children and dead infants, like bodies of small children being found. And she, in this moment that everyone else is being very serious, starts making crying baby noises. Like, I'm sitting here trying to talk about this history, and she's going, Mama, Mama, won't somebody come help me, Mama? And I sort of look at her funny and try to continue the story. And it would have been one thing if she did it just once. And at this point, by the way, yes, all the other guests are glaring over at her like, what the fuck are you doing? But the thing is she kept going all the way through that stop and to the next stop. And she'd pause every single time I looked at her because every time I'd look at her, I'd be opening my mouth to say, please stop. And she would stop for a second. And then we'd be walking on out of here. Somebody help me! And I'm like, I'm gonna kill you, woman. Like, this is wildly inappropriate. Uh, but another one that is a more <laughs> infuriating one. I had a group that we were gathering. Like, we hadn't even started yet. And it was a small group, so everyone could sit around and talk to each other, which is always good for me, because that means that people are chatting with each other. But there was this one woman who just was a bit socially awkward. Like, she clearly was not able to read the room. 
uh and she was talking we've been talking about like what people have been doing where they'd gone like what tourist attractions they had done and she interrupts someone else to say that she was really upset that she hadn't found a funeral yet and I was like, what do you mean? Like, what? Like, do you mean a recreation of a jazz funeral? And she's like, no, where do I go to find a funeral? Do I have to like go to a specific church? And I'm like, it's, it's a funeral. It's not a tourist attraction. And she's like, no, I just want to go and take pictures at a funeral. And I'm like, ma'am, funerals happen because people die. And she's like, yes. And I'm like, that means they're for mourners. People who knew that person, unless we're talking about a public funeral, and that's for a public figure. And like, yeah, if someone famous has died recently, you might find one. But otherwise, no, that's not what funerals are for. And like, at the beginning, I thought she was joking, but that one, I'm pretty sure she was not joking. She was just being mildly inappropriate. Uh, but the most recent one. And there was a girl on my tour a couple of nights ago. I was talking about a story of a woman who was sent off in her late teenage years to enter into an arranged marriage. Which, you know, the thing about arranged marriages is people rarely have a choice of the matter. And the woman's husband was, you know, talked a bit trash about. And I was talking a bit about him. And this woman interrupts me to shout, Did he have a big dick? And I'm just sort of looking at her like, what the hell does that have to do with anything? Like, A, why did you bring this up? And B, she phrased it in a way that made it sound like she was saying, like, did at least you have a big dick to make it up for? And like, none of this is appropriate. But once again, it's not inappropriate enough I can kick you off. I'm just sitting there thinking in my head, for the love of God, learn to read a room. This is not the time or place. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and feel free to share your own experiences in the comments below.